Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Isris Gaming versus Swag and Tucker. That's right, it's the semifinals for the Rockets League. I'm SB Revolution 5, your host for the afternoon. And it is going to be a great selection of games this afternoon, guys. First up, we have the r former CNB team, uh, which is now going by Swagenthager, once again, bringing me back to the good old uh, days of Dota, really. They're going to be up against Isris Gaming in all their glory. Uh, Isris barely making it in here, but... Squeezing past Pew Pew in a very close final two game series. Ten seconds remaining. Five it's going to be a great day, though. After this, we do have Keyed Stars, the former South American Rejects team, up against time. the house is down. I should have Vanessa Dota joining me in a little bit. Um. Uh, but anyways, we do have two stand-ins for CMB tonight, or this afternoon. Um, that is Baga at Follow Sono Dota. Therence and Grintax D are standing in for, I believe, Klotz and ADR at the moment. We do already have most of those anti-fun heroes banned out, uh, like and Viper most notably, as well as Batrider and Void in the second phase from Isris, so Death Prophet and Razor going ahead and being picked up in the first stage by either team. Uh, Razor b being a very good hero, but not exactly that strong against Death Prophet, who doesn't have that many targeted abilities. However, he is strong against uh, Swag and Tiger's second pick, Skyrath Mage, which they picked right after the other. Tidehunter going to be there to disrupt a bit of teamfight, and Centaur Warrunner going to be there to get them away from Razor's Drain. There's already a uh, Witch Doctor banned out. We've been seeing Witch Doctor paired up with Tidehunter a lot lately, just so you can follow that Ravage up with some big, big physical damage. Ten seconds remaining. And also a big shout out to um, DDX for uh, going ahead and sending out the Reserve time. stream to all of his lovely followers. Anyways. Getting into the game right now, um, CMB are apparently in transition over to Payne Gaming. Uh, that's already been leaked, but Payne hasn't made the official announcement yet, so they're still using Swag and Tiger as their name for the moment. Isris aren't changing sponsor, of course, so... Still sticking with their regular team. It looks like four out of the five members are going to be here. They actually have Link Fox standing Great in team. for... Um, gosh, I can't remember their fifth player's name, and I know him very well. Anyways, we'll get back to that in a second once I think of it. Jakiro is going to be their third pickup. This is not a hero we see very often, and he's kind of an enigma of a hero. that He doesn't play very much like Enigma, because he doesn't have a black hole, of course, but he does have pretty big teamfight abilities, and he has a lot of push power. The question is, where are they going to put this Shakira? We have seen people run it in mid or safe lane. Um, in fact, I've played in mid quite a bit against TA in the past, and he's very effective in that lane. Um, Liquid Fire does a lot against TA. The only thing is, you generally want to have some sort of setup stun or something. to go ahead and start things up with so that you can line up that ice path very well but we could easily see him in that. I haven't really seen Isris run Jakiro that much although I believe they have in the past they're not going to have a Faceless Void to combo it up with, which is a very common partner. But 
Tidehunter can fulfill that role. He'll give a lot of lockdown in the mid-game. And even more in the late game, once he gets that refresher up. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I have a little something stuck in my throat. We are going to see Rubik coming out from CMB. Probably going to be Ned or Baga's hero here. Um, although Ned is transferring into a bit of a core role on the team. Uh, just a bit of a role shuffle for CMB, so... Shifting away from support and into either offlane or safe lane carry. It is rumored that Klotz may be actually leaving the team as well. Would hate to see that happen, but... While he's such a good player, it is the team's decision in the end. Five seconds <sighs> remaining. Oh, that's right, I drank all of that. Reserve time. <laughs> Sorry, I was just looking around for my drink and then realized I'd thrown it away, because, you know, it was empty. Anyway, sorry for the little bit of a late start here, ladies and gents. Five seconds remaining. And it will be a Templar Assassin for Isaris. So, CMV already having banned out the Viper, it could put them in the somewhat awkward position of wanting to pick up a Venomancer, which we've seen be effective. Isaris, um, DDX actually played that the other day. In the mid lane. And I don't believe that hero is quite as good as it's kind of hyped up to be. Dire team ban. But it definitely can be. They've also got the Jakiro on their side. So most of the really strong TA counters are out. The only Radiant problem I really see coming out there is uh, possibly Centaur Warrunner. With Return, he can do a lot of easy damage to TA with uh, the physical harass that comes out from that. Which will break down refraction charges a lot quicker if TA decides to harass him at all. Death Prophet, though, will not have a great matchup up against Templar Assassin. Seeing as all her damage Ten is single remaining. instance, you definitely need to harass out TA very quickly Five to get those refraction remaining. charges away, and then throw out some Crypt Swarms. The only problem is, by the time Crypt Swarm is really going to be effective, Refraction is also going to have many more charges defensively, and it's going to be harder to cut through like that. Doom will be the final pickup for CMB, so a bit of a greedy lineup, but a very team fight focused one. They want to shut down these heroes. Templar Assassin Doomed is I'm gonna go ahead and say virtually useless in a team fight, especially if she hasn't already gotten that initial meld hit off to reduce the armor. The only downside for Doom is that he does have very low armor, so that armor reduction on him will be very strong, especially with the massive amounts of physical damage coming out. Tied under a pretty high Physical damage dealer, Razor as well, and Venomancer will actually end up coming out from Mistress, so they're looking very aggressive. Um, they're actually going to be running a support Veno, so the only real source of lockdown they have is, of course, Ravage, Ice Path, and that's about it. Um, they have a decent amount of slows, but I'm not sure, and uh, it looks like we're already having a bit of a name swap. That is Baga on the Rubik. <clears throat> ten seconds, ten seconds remaining. A big Five shout out to everyone coming out to the channel today, though. Uh, make sure you guys tell your friends this game is going on. Because I know there's more people that want to watch this. I'm going to do a quick scoot over to game stage. Prepare for battle. And just mention that the stream is going on. That's actually, we're getting underway very quickly over here. That was not right.
Alright, so getting into our game right now, we have a bit of early action coming out. We are going to see one ward placed down by CMB right on that rune spot, but actually, Skyrath is going ahead and getting caught out. Ned going to be playing that Skyrath mage. He's already slowed down, and he's going to get denied by Centaur. No first blood for you, Isaris. Not yet. Very nicely played by CMB right there. A way to start off this match saying no kills for you, Isaris. Getting rid of that... Um, Really quick. The battle begins. And the battle gonna be beginning. Let's get our team introductions underway. We have Nedara on the Venomancer. Fullback will be on the Jakir. They're gonna be your two supports for an aggressive trialing with Dolce, it looks like, or possibly just roaming supports in general. On the mid lane, we're going to have DDX, now known as El Diaz, the 10, as he said in the lobby. He's going to be playing your Templar Assassin. And over here on the top lane, we have Link Fox with a, well, linking hero, <laughs> the Razor, up here in the solo safe lane. He's going to be up against Grint XD, the stand-in for CMB right now, who's going to be playing Doom. Already found himself a Centaur in the jungle. And actually, First Blood's going to go on the bottom lane. They're going to take down Nadara. They already denied him a kill on Skyrath. And, uh, very sorry I missed that, guys. King RD is gonna be on your Death Prophet in the mid lane. <coughs> We've got Baga, known as Pain, Moody Hayes here. On the Rubik, Therence will be standing in as well. He's on your Centaur Warrunner in this tri lane. And Ned will be on the Skyrath. Both of these teams have a little bit of an odd thing with these tri lanes in that they're centered around offlane heroes. Usually heroes that just need XP, they're going to be getting a bit of farm as well, which is going to add to either team's aggression here. It's going to mean a fast mech for Tidehunter. He's not going to have to rely on these ancient stacks, although eventually he will be able to farm them very quickly. Uh, Centaur, it's going to mean a fast blink as well. So... going to be very hard. Templar, going ahead and finding yourself a double damage rune. Aesiris have that bot rune warded up very nicely. Uh, as well as a nice rune here to block the camp. And go ahead and give them vision of a little bit of the lane here. They can see a sliver of when um, heroes have fallen back that far. Of course they can see him over here and you can see Tidehunter going ahead and pinging that one out right now. And I'm sure you guys are wondering, who am I favoring here? I honestly don't even know. They actually did have Razor take out Doom on the top lane. I didn't even catch that. Doom is rather vulnerable against Razor. Razor is very good against melee heroes, because as soon as they come up to last hit, he can link them. And uh, right now, there's that. And Doom basically has to... Whoa, run away. Sorry, my WASD wasn't working here. And uh, at this point, 394, 345, he is a little faster than Razor when Razor isn't phase boots and he has his uh, Scorched Earth up. But Razor should be able to dominate this lane. However, since Doom has Devour, he's going to be in a very um, simple position as well. And while Doom actually taking a lot of damage up top, did play a little offlane Doom late last night, but I was against an anti-mage lion lane, and it was rather no mana, no fun kind of situation. They actually still have no ancient stacks up for Dolce. They're going to be relying on most of his farm and lane, which is going okay, but it isn't going well by any means. Centaur outfarming him by about 2 CS. They're going to go ahead and drag back Nadara into the stomp and the double edge. Centaur able to take him down there. They're trying to caress out Dolce just to stop Therence from getting taken down here. Fullback going to dive in a little too far. Ned going to throw out one last Arcane Bolt before he runs out of mana. And meanwhile, Doom actually out of lane completely. He didn't even regen all the way up there. Of course, he will be able to use Scorched Earth for a bit of regen. He also has a Tango, but both these heroes now are going to be going for that rune. However, TA with boots already up. And either going for a Midas or some Power Shreds right away here is going to have that advantage. There is a 
what I believe is going to be a Ring of Aquila, probably eventually, coming out for Razor, just so he has that sustain in lane. Um, meanwhile, we've got a lot of action going on around this map, guys. Keep in mind, it does say 2-2, but one of these kills, if you're just joining us on CMB, was actually a deny onto Ned. Um, that's kept him a little starved for gold here. But he is still just playing that hard support role. <laughs> and they're, uh... They're kind of fighting over the courier at the moment here. Meanwhile, TA going ahead and setting up some aggressive traps. Uh, you can see King already tried to... Go ahead and take one of those down. Wasn't able to right now. Meanwhile, there's actually a big slow out onto fullback and Doom disconnects from the game. This is probably the most awkward position to pause in that there has ever been on the face of the earth. But of course, you can't have one hero missing from the game, and actually he's going to be over here in the jungle. He actually keeps finding the centaur, it looks like. The attack speed is nice, but I prefer to have the uh, satyr, if you can find it. Um, this guy. For the unholy aura, four health regen a second is very good in the early game. In fact, uh, ring of regen, that's basically 700 gold worth of HP regen early on in the game. For a hero that has very low armor like Doom, who actually only has, well, has no armor at this point, only 14 agility on him, he's going to be relying on the stout shield to protect him from Razor's right clicks in lane. And honestly, <laughs> blocking 20 damage off of Razor's large drain It's not going to be that much. So, I'd like to see him go for a more armor-focused build. Knowing the way CMB likes to play, even if this is a stand and he may very well go for a Midas. And CMB, they have the better late game, I would say. Especially if they can keep Razor shut down. The problem's going to be, if Razor's allowed to snowball, which he already is snowballing very well, keep in mind. Uh, Doom has nine last hits. Keep in mind, I want to say that counts Devour last hits. Now, he is getting bonus gold from Devour as well. But, um... Razor has pretty much triple his last hits at this point, And 16 denies. He's starving Doom for experience at this point. He's actually sitting on level 6. And Doom is sitting on a measly level 4, almost level 5. It's a two-level gap here between these two heroes. And Razor feels completely comfortable that he's going to be able to get more experience. Uh... He hasn't even put up a point in his ult just yet. Don't forget, guys, tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, I believe that's 16 hours Brazil time, we do have the third place decider match and then the grand final. <clears throat> this is a single elimination tournament. Of course, um, that does still matter 
a bit because you're not going to see um, you're still going to see these teams in um, the third place match if they lose which still confers a bit of prize money <clears throat> all of these teams will be invited back for season 2 as far as I know I'm actually going to do real quick, just going to reconnect to the game while we still have a DC, just so we can get the music back, because it's just a little quiet in-game at the moment. It's too quiet. Once again, guys, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that follow button. And, whoa, I come back and we're already resumed right now. Uh, Rubik is actually not dead right now. It's actually going to be Centaur that gets taken down here. In the end, Baga will get hit with an anchor smash. Nadar dropping low. One more right click from Ned will do the job. But fullback with a double kill. And that's going to be a nice start for him. We do have Centaur going ahead and TPing back into the lane. TA is still doing pretty well against Death Prophet on this mid lane. Is going for that Midas. A bit of a greedy pickup. But when you're CSing this well, and you've got a hero who wants to go somewhat late game, you're going to need a good chunk of farm to really get this TA moving across the map. A mysterious force. <clears throat> Illusion and double damage runes coming out of the mid lane. We actually see Ned coming, or Baga coming in here. Excuse me, I got him mixed up. I'm so used to Ned playing Rubik that it's a little weird. He's actually going to place that aggressive ward right there, but I think he may have moved into that psionic trap a little bit. I do like the positioning of these psionic traps by TA. Didn't have to leave the lane so much as to say, okay, let's put a trap right on the rune where it's pretty clear that you put a trap there. Actually, an identical ward coming out right across the lane here from Nadara. And it looks like Ned and Baga are going to move up toward top. Smoked up. They want to shut this Razor down, and they know they need to. He's going to be going for the mech. TA now with a 7-minute hand of Midas right on the dot there, and that is excellent timing, especially on the mid lane. She's farming incredibly here. Death Prophet on the other end is going for some phase boots as well as an old talisman. Maybe not a drum so early, but in the million time, Link Fox will get taken down up top. Ned is going to get harassed out, but denied again by Doom. And this is the problem with them picking up so much damage over time. Easy denies, easy life. Rubik will end up going down. He's pinging out Grint. Just saying, why you no deny, bro? Why no deny? Doom will scorch your fur. Or scorched Earth up and look to turn here, but a little too much damage over time coming out. That's a killing spree for fullback at this point. And a lot of gold is actually being denied the way of Isris with, I want to say, two denies coming out. It's only really 5-4 here. One other thing is we are going to see difference in team net worth now on the graph, which is really huge, um, as opposed to just gold earned. I actually see this XP and gold... Going almost identically here. Attack. Now keep in mind, that is the pause in the middle there. So the graph is a tiny bit skewed. Apologize for that. Radiant's top tower is under Jakiro attack. now actually with Tranquil Boots up. Usually you like to see Mana Boots on Jakiro. He does have rather high mana cost, especially when you factor in his ult, which has a very high mana cost, but... Wants to be used in every single fight. And uh, Isris are currently in the lead here. Even with these denies, CMB's losing gold. Or swag, excuse me. Swag and Tiger is losing gold. And Doom will... King of the denies over here. He's going to deny the tower as well. Let's take a quick look at XP. We do see about a 2k XP lead for Isris at the moment. About a 3k net worth lead as well. Taking a look at levels, though, Jakiro and Tide are actually falling behind. Venomancer is getting a lot of the gold here in the tri lane. Still playing a support role for sure, though. They're starting to stack these up for Tide. They've got a triple stack right there, but the team is converging on the mid lane right now. TA, of course, leading a net worth with that Midas, and that's going to help the team snowball toward victory. Baga is going to rotate in here. They actually just dropped some boots there real quick. I think Jakiro was trying to... Um, 
not lose his regen when he went up toward the tower. He is dropping rather low here. Actually, up top, we do have Grant getting chased down by Link Fox. 63 damage drained there. Won't be too much. Better man, so now picking up that urn. Another stack, making that a four stack coming out for Tide. And things are not looking great for Swag and Tiger right now. They've got some holes in terms of initiation in their lineup, especially when Centaur doesn't quite have his Blink Dagger. 600 gold to go, and it is the 10 minute mark. He's not looking too great, and Doom is definitely not looking too great. In terms of levels, he's doing okay. But in terms of farm, he should really have more. And he's going for Mana Boots just to have that extra spam ability. And actually, not maxing Devour, so he's not going super greedy here. CMB not looking too strong. I know they are using a sand in because apparently, um, as King RD said, two of the players were asleep. And to which Ski Out responded, well, it's noon. Why are they asleep? And no one had any good answer for that. So. I know this game was not advertised to be at this time. It was going to be later in the day. But uh, Isris's DDX could not play it late at night here. So. We went ahead and scooted it back. Tide continuing to farm up this ancient stack. Needs a bit more health and mana to do so, though, completely. Although he does have his 10 stick charges here. And again, you'd learn something new every day in Dota. Um, apparently, neutral spells activate the stick charges. I had no clue. Still sitting on this 4-7 to seven score line right now. And even though Isris are not getting kills, they're staying, keeping their lead in net worth. The CMB is beginning, or swag, excuse me, is beginning to catch up in terms of, uh, Hours. oh my gosh, uh, experience. This is the part where I need you guys to go spam Renessa on Twitter and say, Go Co-Castle 3 -vo. Go Co-Castle 3 -vo. Charge in from Centaur, actually to go in on Tide here. Nice steal there by Rubik. Didn't get the Ravage, of course, as it wasn't used, but that's going to be Centaur's Blink Dagger secured right there. And now the ulti coming out from King RD. They're not wasting any time. He's going to go right after this tower. Has an Invis Rune and a full Magic Wand to escape with. And actually, Therence is going to rotate toward the mid lane, where the enemy team is looking to kind of trade for towers, and they might get the better trade off here. They'll lose a bit of Roche control. Actually, a beautiful Ice Path there from fullback. The stop going to miss from Therence. And now, King RD getting drained out here. Therence will end up falling to the ulti from Razor. The bot tower does end up falling to, um, the Rubik. But even with the Death Prophet ult, Isris does not appear to be afraid of this at all. They're going to take down the tower anyway. Jakiro getting the last hit there. And he's got 1,400 gold. Could very well be working on that Aghanim Scepter. Which, before... The big buff to it, I thought was a great, great um, upgrade. It already got you a lot more damage, and it's on a very short cooldown, so it is a very spammable ability. But now, of course, with that 14 second duration, it doubles the duration, doubles the range. And they're going to be able to take a Roche off of this, with CMB not really being able to do nothing, anything about it. Uh, without the Death Prophet ultimate up, it really hurts their team fight potential. They can't really interrupt these fights very well anymore. Still haven't had that big team fight break out, though. They're probably waiting on Dolce to really get his Blink Dagger up. Actually, he's got it up, but they're... He wants more. Greed from the Tidehunter here. And actually, TA's going to be taking a bit of his stack. You can't blame her, though. She's actually got a double damage rune in the bottle and doesn't even need it to take this down. One of the things you do want to pull off with the TA in your lineup is that early Roche. And they've definitely been able to do so. Actually, TA, with enough to buy a Sacred Relic at this point in the game, could go for something like a straight Butterfly. Would still rather see a BKB against the Skyrath. Or, honestly, a... um. 
Desolator out from her. Desa would be a very, very good item. We're seeing like nine armor on the Centaur, and most of that coming from the Tranquil Boots. Uh, five on the Death Prophet, two on the Rubik, one on the Skyrath, and probably one on the Doom. Yeah, he'll be picking up a mech in just a moment to kind of counteract that. He will get five armor from that and get an extra plus two armor when he uses the restore but actually link fox gonna get jumped on they actually use the death prophet ulti anticipating dolce coming in with the ravage link fox will fall or but he gets a double kill in the process and death prophet not looking too comfortable here the silence will come out on fullback and dolce grin xd already hit with the venomancer ulti and ty gonna come forward with an anchor smash to take him down king already trying to tp out and he will be able to make it no lockdown available for him seeing as that ice path that's already used and there's no ravage available and this is where CMB are going to be able to get away with a little bit of their team fight greed. Because when that Ravage is down, there's not really that much lockdown coming out. Jakiro provides a good chunk of lockdown, but he really needs something to set it up. And the Ravage is usually going to be used for that. Same with Venomancer's Gale, even though it's only level 1. He's just got the value point in that for the slow. LDS is going to get hit with a concussive shot right here. They're just looking to take down more towers. They've actually taken down three on the side of Swag and Tiger right now, who are not looking too good. 5k experience lead, about a 7k net worth lead at the moment. TA, a whopping 3,000 gold ahead of Death Prophet. That is about... Let's see, uh... 200 gold a minute lead. Every minute, TA is getting 200 more gold than Death Prophet. Uh, in fact, I could just look at gold per minute, and that would be probably easier to see. 394 up against 554 per minute. That is insane. And the bot tower does get denied. But it's res I don't think they really care. They're getting their money anyways. And they're taking away Swag and Tiger's map control. Of course, they've only really lost control of this section of the map. With these towers, they've still got decent jungle control, especially if they get a ward out over here or over here somewhere. Possibly even uh, over here, just to secure the jungle to farm. But then again, they don't really have a hero who's going to be farming the jungle exclusively. Doom's going to get most of his gold from Devourer, which is now being maxed that he's got that mech and those mana boots. But still, for your Doom at 17 minutes, one of the best farming heroes in the game... You're going to want him to get more net worth out of that, and he's on par with Tidehunter at this point, who, in all reality, doesn't have that much. Arcane Boots and a Blink Dagger is nice, but he's still got a thousand in the bank, whereas Doom doesn't have nearly as much. No, Pipita is not playing at the moment. Uh, that's who Link Fox is standing in for, Rico Londo. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Meanwhile, another tower trade going on. CMB going to be going after the top tower up here with the Death Prophet ulti. They'll lose their tier 2 in the process. Not the favorable trade for them. Rubik does manage to pick up a Blink Dagger, so they may not have had as much vision in the early game, but Rubik will have that mobility to possibly get in and steal that Ravage from Tidehunter, and that's one way that CMB can really turn these fights. They do have some amazing steals available. Ice Path being possibly the best steal they could get, even over um, Tide's Ravage, simply because with Rubik there's no cast animation, and it is a very good spell. It's also much easier to steal than uh, Ravage, simply because it's used more. But Ravage, of course, being a very good steal, anything from Nadara is going to be great at this point. Um, the Plague Wards, the Gale, even, or the Poison Nova, of course. And Rubik actually going to take down a Tier 2 tower, but they're about to lose another Tier 2 tower. That's two Tier 2s lost now for a Tier 1 and a Tier 2 for Swag and Tiger, but they're not looking to stop pushing. Actually, Death Prophet, her ult's up in 30 seconds, does have a TP back, but still needs some mana to really be able to fight here. She's going to go ahead and TP, but she's going to be in the fountain regening up a bit. That bottle's going to help her out a little bit, but will she be able to make it here in time? Still 30 seconds on the ultimate. Aegis getting reclaimed in 30 seconds hasn't even been used by LDS yet. who does still have a 10 second BKB. It's just been a lot of split push rat Dota and CMB or swag, excuse me, not getting the favorable trades here. 
Actually, a beautiful three-man stomp and a double edge, but there's your Ravage from Tide. They're trying to go ahead and take down Baga, who can't steal at the moment. And he already has used Anchor Smash, so Death Prophet Ulti going to have to come in and save the day. Does take down Tide. Two buybacks coming out right now. Doom going to end up falling, but he did Doom DDX, whose Aegis has run out now. And that's going to be most unfortunate, as they do manage to take him out. And excellent timing, but it needs to have come a little sooner. Link Fox going to get taken down at this point. Fullback, the last one standing here. Venomancer has already bought back, but is it even worth it? That's a double kill for GRD, who takes him down. And Swag and Tiger showing they've still got a little bit left in the tank at this point. It's not over yet, boys. The first big team fight of the game coming out. And putting Swag and Tiger back on the map, you can see that gold graph start to take a turn upward, which is definitely what they need. The experience graph is showing even more of a difference at this point. Game quieting down for just a moment after that huge team fight. Link Fox still trying to get a bit more farm. He does have an Axe and a Scepter up here. I mean, wow. An Axe and a Scepter for Link Fox. No, he's got an Axe and a Mech. Tidehunter actually going ahead, and since Razor's got that Mech, he's free to go straight for the Refresher. Still stacking Ancients at this point in the game. And this shows Isris are not going to let the pressure up. If they can knock CMB down to the third place match and secure themselves a spot in the grand final they want to do so right now and Link Fox actually playing very well Doom will throw out a quick pause here Nadara looking a little sad faced at the moment I will say though the MVP of that one fight was the Doom with the three-man stomp and double edge coming in there, he really put on a great start to that fight. Going ahead and removing a lot of the HP of the key heroes on Isris. And putting Isris on the ropes, that forced a quick buyback out of Venom. And he wasn't even able to use anything to really make a great impact in the fight. He is 20 gold from a four staff, which will help him out quite a bit. Jakiro has gone for a Yules, and this will be a great setup for his Ice Path, which he'll be able to follow up with Macro Power, which he's now got that one point into. Excuse my yawning here, guys. Hope you guys are enjoying the game so far. Don't forget, if you're on Twitch TV, to hit that follow button. If you're in-game, don't forget to uh, head over to twitch.tv slash SBRevolution5 and give me a follow. Uh, tell me what you think of the casting. Any feedback is welcome, as long as it says something, not just, Oh my god, you're so bad. Because that doesn't tell me anything, to be honest. We also have our Portuguese coverage over on Game underscore Stage on Twitch. Looks like we are ready to go once again here. Templar is last and going ahead and resuming the game. There's your four staff up for Nadara. Rubik with these stolen plague wards is actually almost giving Link Fox a bit to play against, but actually giving him some extra gold as well that he wouldn't normally be getting. And the question becomes, well, is it really worth it? And actually another pause coming out for Swag. They must be having some kind of ping issue. Let's check that out right now. Doesn't look that bad. But then again, it could just be some weird spikes or something. Oh, it's their team speak. Of course. I am going to try to get an interview with our winners. Uh, after the match.
I know I can probably get Nadara or Ned to do a quick interview. So. Centaur now with a Hood of Defiance up. That's going to help him a lot against the large amounts of magic damage coming out from Isris. He probably will end up turning that into a pipe, I would imagine. Uh, however, of course, with Razor's ult being physical damage, TA's pretty much only physical damage. <clears throat> it's going to be a pretty rough spot for them. TA actually will just drop the bottle. Going to pick up another Roshan here. With that trap in the pit, they know exactly when Rosh is spawning. And actually, who has her bottle? Oh, Razor has picked it up right now. Something he can hold on to for a little while. It looks like LDS has already got a Manta style up. That'll increase the team's pushing power. May not provide that armor reduction, but then again, with the low armor already of these heroes, they're pretty much taking full physical damage at this point with just a meld hit. There will be a charge out from Centaur. Just a TP away, it looks like. No aggression coming in on the top lane. Death Prophet ulti is up, but there's already two TPs back, and Dolce, I believe, was already here. And he's actually only about 200 gold from that Refresher Orb. This is where things could get really ugly. Now, keep in mind, two Ravages. That's another chance for Rubik to steal it, but if they use them back-to-back, -back, Rubik may not even get the chance. A three-man smoke coming out on the mid lane, and they are pinging out Doom right now, who's right under a TA trap. Unfortunately for him, he could get caught out right now. Fullback going to come in. He's going to Yule's Doom, set up the Macro Pyre and the Ice Path, leading off with that Macro Pyre just to ensure the damage coming through. And Grindex, he slowed down. He's going to fall here. No buyback available at the moment. This could be an opening for them to push. Death Prophet going to use the ulti and try to chase down the Razor though right now. Getting drained and actually Vino coming in but gets silenced. Death Prophet not quite able to take down the Razor. Is going to try to back off here. Ned here to ensure her retreat safely. And Tidehunter now has that refresher up at 25 minutes. This is excellent farm for the Tidehunter. Uh, we check out gold per minute. We can see he's at 410 gold per minute. This is higher than either Centaur or Doom. Um, in fact, he's about even to CMB's two supports together. So, doing very, very well for himself at this point in the game. Sitting fourth on the net worth chart, but above four of CMB's player. Dyer's structures are fortified. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Radiant's structures are fortified. Razor now, with the Eye of the Storm stolen, doesn't have that Ags upgrade for it. And actually, a Skywrath ult came out on the back end, but doesn't look like it connected it. Nadara pausing for lag. <laughs> Seriously? Oh. He is for real, though. I did see about 400 ping right there. Looks like he is ready to go right now. Ned, not too happy about that. So keep in mind, though, CMB, it is a best of three, so they do have a chance to come back after this. The mech will be coming out from Doom right now. And Ferris with another two-man stop. The pause uh, going ahead and biting Nadara in the butt. He doesn't end up falling, but he has dropped very low, and he's going to be forced to retreat at the moment. The mid-tower taking a lot of damage. Death probably going to throw out the Shiva's guard here, but no ult available at the moment. That's going to be one racks down, and they're going after the range racks right now. Eight seconds on that ulti, and it's not going to come up in time. The racks is going to end up falling, it looks like. No glyph available for the Radiant at the moment. And they're going to lose two racks off that. And now Death Prophet Ultimate is up, but it's just about 15 seconds too late. And they're not even stopping right now. Link Fox with about 7 seconds to go. Doom with a blink in and a Doom. But there's an ulti coming out from King RD. DDX does manage to take down Scarth Mage. Still has an Aegis available. Even though she may drop right here. She will end up falling here. They're trying to chase down fullback. Moody blinking forward. <coughs> and 4 7 himself back. King RD in the middle of everything. But a stomp coming in on 2. There's actually a Blade Mail up as well. But the Ravage from Tidehunter. He's going to refresh. He's going to throw it out again. 
and gets the anchor smash off. No seal for Baga this time. He will get the anchor smash, but is it going to be enough? She already goes ahead and buys back. Doesn't have that ulti available anymore, and this might be another Rax for Isris. The game falling apart very quickly for Swag. <clears throat> you know, they've always said Nintendo 64, Isris 0, but right now that is definitely not the case. Actually, an ulti out from Skyrath will help pick, pick off TA, but the mid lane is pushing in at the moment. This is not a good situation for CMB to be in, or Swag, excuse me. It's really hard to switch this over here. The CMB are hanging on by a thread. The gold lead still at about 12k gold, about... Um, 7k net worth? We'll say. But Team Jaja looking a little bit better than Team Hui Hui at the moment. Sad day for your Brazilian fans. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Oh, I'm stupid. I assumed at this point in the game CMB had taken out the tier 1 tower, but now they have. However, 28 minutes finally taking out that tier 1 tower and having no tier 2s of their own left and only one tier 3. Push-wise, this is not looking great for CMB. However, they do have pretty strong late game. TA is beginning to fall off. There's multiple instances of damage coming out from some of these heroes are beginning to be a big force. Razor now does have a BKB up to protect himself against Skyrath. Centaur now with a pipe to try and protect himself against the Jakiro, as well as the rest of the team. There is going to be an Ice Bath and a, a Liquid Fire out there from Jakiro. Fullback will get taken down in the end. But did it do a chunk of damage to King RD, who's actually dropping very low. Will pop off the ulti and the Shiva's guard right now. Is trying just to run. Does have a Reaver available as well. It looks like DDX is backing off for the moment here. KRD on low HP though. Needs to get away from that Razor very quickly. And it looks like he will be able to. But only barely. He's dropped slow to that. And actually falls to a Plasma Field. No buyback available. He used it in the last fight. And the Centaur also on the sidelines. This could be the end. Right here. Bog is going to get taken down. There's no buyback available for him either. Only Doom and Skyath are available here. And GG's just going to be called. They know it's over. Their Rats is exposed. And CMB are going to fall in game number one here of the best of three. They need to bring this back against Isris. I'm hoping to see a three-game series here at least, folks. Swag and Tiger, I mean. Swag and Tiger. They are not CMB. They are Swag and Tiger. I'll get this straight. Of course, guys, I'm SB Revolution 5, your host for the afternoon. And congrats to Isris on their pretty decisive victory. I didn't feel like CMB played all that badly, but I feel like they would have played a lot better if they had their usual teammates. Hopefully, those two have woken up at this point. Um, the stand-in for Isra was working out much better. Of course, guys, you can find me on twitch.tv slash sbrevolution5, facebook.com slash sbrevolution5, Dota, and Twitter at sbrevolution5. Appreciate the follows, the support, and everything. Guys, you are the best fans in the world. We'll see you in game number two in just a moment.